this modern age, city folk wanting to escape the rat race have fled to the countryside. Tempted by the dream of village life, rural tranquility, and an unchanging, simpler world. It's a dream that has transformed too many of Britain's villages into city dwellers' chocolate box fantasies. But all's not lost. Join us if you dare, and we'll rip back the veil of this green and pleasant land to show you villages where townies fear to tread. Give me a naughty little village. There's some tough nuts around here. Welcome to the toughest villages in Britain. The savages. <laughs> Townies beware, we're about to wander off the public footpath and enjoy the simple life in the muddy fields of rough, tough, rural Britain. Not even get off my land, don't even look at my land. On tonight's show, we'll learn country ways from noble huntsmen. I always go for the ad, because the head is a difficult shot. We'll meet happy-go-lucky village youth. You've got no licence, no tax, no tests. And now that's on me, boy. I just say, uh, shove it. And gentlemen farmers. Got bigger tits than barbies. And wherever we go, we'll be assured of a warm countryside welcome. You come in starting gobbing off, you ain't got a chance. First on our tour, we're at Skinning Grove on the North Yorkshire coast. It's hidden away in a cleft in the hills known as the Valley of Iron. One time it was just a lazy little fishing village. The discovery of Ironstone in 1846, it became the Eldorado of Great Britain. Today, anyone coming here looking for Eldorado will find plenty to treasure. Well, anyone visiting the village, it's like drawing curtains back and walking back 50 years in time. It's like Jurassic Park. Coming to Skinning Grove is a reminder of a gentler age, when man and nature worked in closer harmony. It's a place where you can bump into animal lovers, like horse trader Derek. Oh, you've got to be very, very firm, yeah. I don't like giving a bit of stick, but now and again you've got to level them up. Or they'll just take their own way, you know. It's like you, you don't, you don't like the smack, you know what I mean? You, you learn, don't you? No one in Skinning Grove likes a smack. As what, kid? But you'll find folk in this village can get very physical. Hazel's very protective of her garden and its distinctive ornamentation. Just the animals and these dolls, we just get them wherever we go. If we go anywhere and we see them, we pick up, buy them. People in Skinny Grove are well and truly tough. They have to be. Get on the wrong side of them and they can be murder. I'll tell you. Skinning Grove is a village where you don't have to do much to get noticed. Any visitors come, you'll see the, the net curtains move and who's he type of thing, and everyone in the village knows each other's business. And they'll be only too happy to share their business with you. Stroll along the delightful riverbank and you'll bump into Mikey. He'll let you in on some of the local leisure activities, like throwing stones into the water, and tell you the story of how he was born in the toilet. Wait me, Mum. I thought that she needed a shit. She went to the toilet and I popped down and she shouted my brother to come and get me out of the toilet and he said, I'm watching cartoons. She went, come and get this fucking bear before it drowns. So he come to the toilet, got me out and went to take me into the front room because he was missing his cartoons. And she said, where are you going with him? He said, I'm going into the room. She said, God's still attached. My mum's friend was Pam, and I think that when well, she was born down the toilet, so I'm not the only one down skinny girl who was born down the toilet. If Mikey had been flushed down the toilet, they wouldn't have had far to look. Up until this year, the village's sewage was pumped straight out onto Skinning Grove Beach. We used to have a, a slaughter house halfway up in Skinning Grove Valley. An old, like it was an old one at the time. 
and all our rubbish and everything used to get tipped into drains, which used to go down storage pipe and out at sea, come out at storage pipe end there. And on Eastley Wind, when wind was off sea, it used to push out stuff back in. And you used to be, you used to find pigs' ears, pigs' trotters, nails off pigs' feet, and all sorts, bits of cow, bits of hide off cow, and you found all sorts like that on the beach. But as beachcomber Brian discovered, a sewage pipe on the beach isn't all bad news. I was walking up the rocks one day, and just near the sewage pipe outlet, where all sewage comes out and shit and muck and rubbish, and I found a pair of false teeth. Anyway, I, I just picked them up. I thought I'll have a laughing have a local pub with them. Anyway, there's a lad in there called Goosey. Fortnight before I'd found these teeth, he'd, had a, he'd been sick in toilets and lost his teeth in toilets. Anyway, I'd, I took the false teeth out and showed him them and he said they were his. So I gave him them back and he put them straight in his mouth and he still has them now. I found them at end at sewage pipe. <laughs> You'd think skinning grovers would be safe from sewage in their own houses, but even here there's no escape. The local stream has flooded twice in the last four years, each time with disastrous consequences. It was up to windowsills in some houses. Everything was ruined down here. As soon as you get a bit of rain, now everybody's frightened. They're coming out, looking at Beck, saying how high it's getting, and, you know, there are, a lot of people are frightened about it. But the floods don't worry this young scamp. In fact, nothing does. Meet DJ, Skinny Grove's answer to James Dean. Rebel without an inner tube. DJ's living proof that just because you live in a village doesn't mean there's nothing to do. I like playing my tunes really loud. <laughs> Thrashing crap out my motorbike. Driving cars. It's just boredism, that's all it is. You're just bored and you want something to do. So I just buy cars and motorbikes and just hammer hell out of them. DJ's heroic battle against boredism hasn't endeared him to all his fellow villagers. Brian's lucky enough to be DJ's next door neighbour, and his only escape is his pigeon loft, high above the village. He takes engines in the house and starts them up in the house. So you can imagine what it sounds like in my house. We're always complaining. Uh, you've got no tax, you've got no, uh, you've got no license, no tax, no test, and all that on my bike. I just say, uh, shove it, I'm not bothered. But DJ's cavalier attitude masks a healthy respect for the law. If I was on the road, then by law I would have to wear an helmet, no doubt about that. But if, it were, if I owned the law, I would say no. You can still get the one lad out in a village who will just make everyone else's life a total misery. His crackers flipped, Danny. Have you been in his house? <laughs> God help you. Well, this is my house. It's not a, it's not a pleasant sight, though. I've um, started to get, uh, trying to get some wallpaper in and all that, and um, bits of bobs. I'll get there eventually from the tip, hopefully. Most of all, yeah, all my old stuff's from the tip, Gisborough tip. It says amazing, wait, it's amazing what you can find. Oh, there are my potatoes, all I ever eat is chips, 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 and that's all I ever eat. Oh, well, this is my kitchen. If, if you notice, it's quite a state. Do you know one day, what he did, I don't know whether I've told you, 